For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Next up, the amino acids that are degraded to acetyl-CoA. How many amino acids have their carbon skeleton degraded directly to acetyl-CoA? There are seven in this case. So we got tryptophan, one, lysine, two, phenylalanine, three, tyrosine, four, leucine, five, isoleucine, six, and threonine, seven. Okay. Cool. Let's get rid of all those check marks. All right. So let's start up here at the top left with tryptophan. And also, by the way, it should go without saying, but try to keep track of the carbons and the way they're colored. Um, it'll help you a lot. And it's, it'll be a lot for me to keep saying back and forth. But um, if I uh, just, just try to keep track of the colors, for instance, like with tryptophan here, we're going to cut it. As we saw in the previous video, tryptophan gets cut sort of right here. Um, and that top portion ends up, like we said in the previous video, in alanine, right? Uh, those three blue carbons end up there and that alanine can give rise to pyruvate as we saw previously. Um, but this bottom portion we said goes elsewhere and a lot of it's gonna go to acetyl-CoA. So um, there are 11 carbons total here in tryptophan, three of them left in alanine. So we've got eight left. Two of them leave as carbon dioxides so then we have six left, and four of them are these orange ones here. Those four end up here, and the other two, uh, the other two are going to end up here and here. So of these four carbons that are not colored here, this this one, this one, this one, and this one, uh, two of them leave as the carbon dioxide. So two of them would be yellow. Um, one of them would be pink, which would end up right here as this carboxyl group. And one of them is purple. That'll end up as this carboxyl group in this molecule here, alpha keto adipate, which is an alpha keto acid. Okay. We can also get that alpha keto adipate from lysine. So up here, we've got lysine. That's got six carbons. Those six carbons are going to end up here in alpha keto adipate. But before we can get that, we have to remove these amino groups. And there's two amino groups. There's one there and there's one there. So those are going to be removed in two transamination reactions. Where it, so two alpha ketoglutarates are going to become two glutamates by getting these amino groups. Okay. There's also some redox reactions in there. And we'll eventually get alpha ketoadipate. Okay. That alpha ketoadipate, we're going to add coenzyme A, um, and that'll be an oxidation of this alpha ketoadipate to glutaryl CoA, and we'll lose this top carbon up here, this purple one, um, the purple carboxyl group. Um, we're going to lose that here. So we go from having six carbons to five carbons in this glutyro CoA because we added this coenzyme A right there. Okay, now that glutyro CoA is going to be turned into acetoacetyl-CoA basically by removing this, at least that's the short uh, short way to think about it. Um, and it's going to be a three-step sort of situation, and these three steps are similar to beta oxidation. Beta oxidation's first three steps are an oxidation, a hydration, and another oxidation. Here it's pretty much the same, except we have an oxidative decarboxylation in the first step, and then we have a hydration and an oxidation, hydration, oxidation. Um, and we end up getting acetoacetyl-CoA right after losing this carbon here, this carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide. Um, and so we get this acetoacetyl-CoA. By the way, we should be paying attention to the idea that as we're doing all this stuff, we're, we're getting you know, these uh, reduced electron carriers, FADH2, NADH, NADH, so on and so forth. So pay attention to that because that could be used for energy, of course. Okay. So acetoacetyl-CoA right here. Um, we can also get this if we uh, start from back up here to the top right. Okay, so up here we've got um, phenylalanine. We'll start with phenylalanine up here. Again, keep paying attention to the uh, the way the carbons and just the atoms are 
colored and 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 whatnot. Um, so we're going to turn phenylalanine into tyrosine. And the only difference between the two molecules is what's going on right here at this carbon. There isn't an OH there. And now there is. So in phenylalanine, there's no OH. To get that OH, we have um, the uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase reaction. And this enzyme is actually of particular importance. Um, and we'll see that actually in the next video. Um, and this reaction, in addition to just this enzyme being important, this cofactor here, the tetrahydrobiopterin, um, is important in that reaction as well. Okay, so we're gonna go from phenylalanine, nine carbons, to tyrosine, with still with nine carbons, just with this OH group after that phenylalanine hydroxylase reaction. And then with this tyrosine, four of the carbons, these four blue ones, will come off as a fumarate. So those two amino acids, phenylalanine and tyrosine, both give rise to fumarate here. Okay, one of those uh, key products. Um, and as far as the other five carbons out of these, this nine, um, four of them, these four orange ones, end up in acetoacetate. And one of them, that carboxyl group carbon up there, will leave as a carbon dioxide. And we lost the amino group in a transamination reaction here okay, to get acetoacetate. Now we can also get that acetoacetate from leucine. Um, so of, of these four orange carbons here, three of them come from right here on leucine. Okay. Um, and in going from leucine to acetoacetate, uh, we have to um, get rid of the amino group in a transamination reaction here. Okay, we're also going to lose this carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide there. Okay, so we'll go from having these six carbons and we'll lose one to have five left over. And we're going to add one here, so it'll be six total, and four of them make their way to acetoacetate. So three of the four orange carbons came from right here. Okay, the fourth one comes from a carbox carbon dioxide. Okay, so we get those four carbons there. What happened to these two yellow carbons? Well, in those those two yellow carbons, they get a coenzyme A attached to them, and they are going to give acetyl CoA. Okay, now the yellow carbons that I just showed end up being orange here. But the reason why I didn't label them as orange up here, the reason why I didn't make these orange is because those don't end up here. It's these three and this one that end up here as orange. So I made, I made those two there yellow because I didn't want it to get confused with this. Anyway, we get this acetoacetate, and that acetoacetate can get turned into acetyl-CoA by basically just adding a coenzyme A um, in, the, in this beta-ketoacetyl-CoA transferase reaction to give acetyl-CoA, oh, sorry, acetoacetyl-CoA right here. Okay. All right, now that acetoacetyl-CoA, of course, can give acetyl-CoA, basically just cleaving that acetoacetyl-CoA into two acetyl coas now i'm not showing the two here because i'm also showing how other things can arrive at this acetyl coa okay. but here going from acetyl co acetyl acetyl coa to acetyl coa that can happen via um the beta ketoacetyl coa transferase um enzyme where the coa is coming from succinyl coa or we can have a thiolase acting on it which is the enzyme from beta oxidation where we just add a coenzyme A to cleave it into two coenzyme, uh, two acetyl coase. Okay. okay. Now we can also get acetyl CoA from isoleucine. So isoleucine over here, we got six carbons total. Um, in going from isoleucine to acetyl CoA, uh, we lose the amino group in a transamination reaction, um, and we lose this carboxyl group up here as a carbon dioxide. So we're left with five carbons. These two carbons end up in acetyl-CoA. 
and these three yellow ones here end up in propanyl CoA. Okay. So that propanyl CoA, we'll see in a later video, ends up in succinyl CoA. Um, but uh, that's not what we're talking about here. Anyway, the point is that these two carbons end up in acetyl CoA, which is how isoleucine gives is degraded to acetyl CoA. Um, and of course, we have some redox reactions there, giving NADHs and FADH2s. Now, um, that covers almost all of the amino acids that give rise to acetyl CoA. The last one here is threonine. Okay, and we actually saw this in the previous video. In the minor pathway, threonine is turned into uh, two amino three keto butyrate in the threonine dehydrogenase reaction. Um, and that two amino three keto butyrate, these two carbons end up in acetyl CoA after that coenzyme A is attached. And this portion of the molecule ends up being glycine. Okay. And so we've got all those carbons ending up basically right here in acetyl CoA. And of course, that can go through the TCA cycle. Okay. Give us some energy. All right. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.